program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green's alongside Wednesday, and that means it's Power Ranking Day. NFL Week 6 Power Rankings. There's a lot going on in the NFL this past week. We had the, uh, well, the big epic battle between the Chargers and the Browns. How will that affect their rankings? Teams at the top, for the most part, did everything they needed to do to stay at the top of the power rankings. And, uh, and you know, the ones at the bottom, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to climb out of that cellar. We're just going to keep shifting. We're just going to keep shifting the worst teams back and forth all season long. I have a great feeling about that. But week six power rankings start off, obviously, with the worst teams in the league we like to call these the Duty 10. <laughs> the Duty 10. Of course, we are live in the Wicked Weed studio, wickedweedbrewing.com. Drink different. Starting out with the 32nd team in the league, it's always the Jacksonville Jaguars. I, I feel like we should call 32 the Jacksonville Jaguars Memorial 32nd spot in our power rankings. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, your guys continue to do things that make me consider them for that bottom spot. They're, I've seen their upside. They beat the Titans. <laughs> They beat the Titans, which keeps them away from the Giants, the Texans, the Lions, and the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want the Lions this low, but I keep losing. So it just is what it is. Well, an 0 and 5 record. This is a team. They're a team that's better than 0 and 5. Yeah, but, you know who's but, not the Jacksonville Jaguars. No, Jacksonville is is stuck in this 32nd position, and you're going to be until you get a competent head coach. I'm still not going to get away from it. And I know it wasn't a you know it wasn't a game deciding decision, but I'm still not going to get away from you handing the ball to Carlos Hyde after James Robinson has had an amazing day, fourth and goal at the one. Urban Meyer just wants his Ohio State buddy to get a touchdown. It's shit like that that's going to keep you at 32 all year uh, long. Well, it's Urban Meyer. I mean, yeah. Urban Meyer is just, he, he's, he, he, we, we've all worked a job where we worked with somebody that we were like, why are you here? <laughs> like, you're fucking bad at this. Why do we keep paying you? Like, right. we, we cut you a check every single week, and I don't know why. And that's Urban Meyer. Yeah. At number 31, in my power rankings, this is, this is where your Jets fall in. After you fell on your face in London against the Atlanta Falcons, I just, I had to drop you. Uh, okay, and see, to me, that's stupid, and I'll tell you why. Okay. You're telling me right now, neutral field, the Jets play the Houston Texans, you're taking the Texans? Yeah. You're doing it wrong. Zach Wilson would eat them alive. With that too high safety look, you know who won't? Quarterbacks with shit arms, like mm -hmm. Mac Jones, mm -hmm. which is why Jeremy took Houston plus the 10. Yeah. They're a keep everything in front of you defense. You give somebody like Zach Wilson enough time, and I'm not trying to defend my Jets. They're terrible. Yeah. But they're not that low. Plus, their defense is good. Mm -hmm. Houston's defense is – literally, name me what Houston does well. Can't. There you go. Lose. They, they lose pretty well. There you go. That's why they're 31. To me, the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars are markedly worse than every team in the NFL. Okay. Uh, except – what? Where'd it go? There it is. For the New York Except Giants. the New York Giants. Who are my number 31? Now, do I actually think the Giants are the 31st team in the league? No. No. Are they without Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley, and Kenny Galladay? Uh, you tell me they have to pay, play Mike Glennon for more than 15 seconds? Yep, that's where you go. You go 31. You're still better than the Jaguars, but not by a lot. Daniel Jones, though, I mean, he's expected to play this weekend. I don't care. To clear the concussion protocol. I don't care. No Saquon Barkley. Oh, so we're going to run uh, Devontae Booker. That'll be fun. Yeah. I have the Jets markedly higher than you. You have the Giants markedly higher. Or the Giants markedly higher than mm, you. You shouldn't. All right, explain to me why. What have they done? By the way, that Falcons team you're dinging the Jets for? Mm -hmm. The Giants lost to them at home. Oh, I know. I know. I just still feel like this is a team that has some fight. Daniel Jones has not been god-awful. And I would take them as uh, the top of the worst teams in the league. I disagree with you vehemently. vehemently. <laughs> Saquon Barkley being gone, of course that hurts. I, uh, obviously. But uh, I guess I was swayed a little bit by the, the onset of 
Kadarius Tony this week. That gives them another legitimate weapon to use. And I think, it would, you know, Daniel Jones, he's probably going to play this week. Saquon will be out a couple of weeks. This will be a team that will be able to – they'll at least be scrappy. How about and, that? And, I'll, and I'll be honest with you, the Kadarius Tony thing is why I have him at 31. Yeah. Do you realize how many receivers had to die before Joe Judge and Jason Garrett went, hey, maybe we should play that kid we took in the first round? Yeah. They played Colin Johnson before they played Kadarius Tony. Yes, I It's understand. a dumpster fire of a train wreck. The fact that you could look at Kadarius Tony and go, you know, I don't think we need to manufacture touches for him through three weeks of the season. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're not good at this. You're not. To me, they're 31, and it's not really all that close. Okay. At number 30, this is where you have the Houston Texans. Yeah, that's, that's Houston Texans territory. Yeah. Because, yeah, they're bad. But at least you showed a little fight. Now, granted, you showed a little fight against a team that I think is absolute dog water. Yeah. But you still showed some. Maybe a little. I mean, it's still not good. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they have a talent limitation. The Giants have talent. Right. They're just not good. Mm Mm-hmm. The Houston Texans have no talent whatsoever. That's kind of why I have. The, that's kind of why I have the Giants higher, is because I do. I do think they have talent. And that's kind of like saying, "Hey, I have a Maserati in the driveway, but I don't have a driver's license because I got a DUI, so I can drive mm-hmm. this sweet huffy." <laughs> that's the New York Giants in a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> Houston Texans at thirty. Davis Mills finally looked like a like a real NFL quarterback this past week. Throwing for over 300 against yards defense against that I don't think is yeah. very good, I, and I understand that. But that still, that still doesn't, you know, that still to me puts them higher than the two worst spots of the league. It's the best I can get. It's the best you're going to get from me. I, I also factor in the schedule because mm-hmm. I look at the Giants and go, "There's not a win left on your schedule." Right. Mm, there's not one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might beat the Eagles. There's just not a lot of winnable games left on the schedule. Right. So the, the Giants are bad. The Houston Texans are bad. The Jets are bad. I mean, the Jets the are Falcons bad. The Falcons are bad. The Jets are bad. There's at least one good unit for the Jets. Mm-hmm. The defense is fine. It's not good, but it's fine. They can slow non-heavy passing teams down. Yeah. The Giants can't stop a fucking nosebleed. The <laughs> Texans cannot stop a nosebleed. Mm-hmm. The Jacksonville Jag- Jaguars actually adamantly look like they're trying to let you score. So, to me, those are the three worst teams in the league. Yeah. Alex Sanders says, sorry, Tank, but uh, Daniel Jones doesn't make me feel all fuzzy trying, uh, trying to win a quarterback battle against anybody but Trevor Lawrence. The only way that, D- that Daniel Jones would make me feel all fuzzy is if he had a feather duster up my ass. <laughs> That's the only way I'm going to feel fuzzy from anything that Daniel Jones does. <laughs> Nice. Very nice. I have a way with words. That's yeah. all I've been told. Steven Tao says Davis Mills is uh, next level. Next. Let neck. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was a good one, Steven. He's, he's half go. G-Raph. No big deal. Two points. <laughs> By the way, are we still doing points? Are we? Is it the... Yes. Is, is I actually have a graphic for that. I just can't make it integrate with the damn server. Oh. <sighs> Anything you're not currently seeing, there's a reason. So it's there's it's just a question coming. of does it make me want to drink aggressively, or uh, have I just not gotten to it yet? Yep. That one makes me want to drink aggressively. You got the Detroit Lions at number 29, and it hurts. It hurt. I, I feel like Dan Campbell felt after the game the other night. Like this did is a cry? team that I want to. Ha- I did not cry. Okay, I did you not. You didn't feel exactly like Dan Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I, I mean, I want them to be higher. In the power rankings. Just win a damn game. Find a way to win one game. So many of the power rankings out there have them as, uh, it's it's them and Jacksonville. The two winless teams have to be at the bottom. I don't see it that way. I see the Detroit Lions as a little bit better than all of these other teams at the bottom. I don't care that they're 0-5. Just look at the way that they have played Especially, I, I still go back to that Baltimore game. If you can hang like that with the Baltimore Ravens, you can't be at number 31 on the power rankings. And that's why I've got them here. The problem is, again, talent deficiency. Yeah. 
All four of the bottom four teams to me are currently sitting with a gigantic talent deficiency. Mm -hmm. And I'm always going to lean on the side of talent. And those four just don't have it. Right. I got Detroit at 28 in my power rankings this week. I have them ahead of the Atlanta Falcons because I think. And I get it. I think you line them up against them. They, I mean, it's going to be close. It's going to be it. a field goal game. I'm not. I mean, I'm not going to denigrate you for having them ahead right. of them. Right. I just I look at them and go, you're going to lose so many close games. Yes. Because they're just. I mean, name me the five best players on this team. Oh God, you got DeAndre Swift, uh, Jared Gurf. Amandra St. Brown, Jamal Williams, Penny Sewell. That'd probably be the five. You know what they all five have in common? What's that? They all five play on offense. Yeah. And the offense still sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. Romeo Quara probably should have been in there, but he's hurt. Yeah, he doesn't count. So. He's DMP dead. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the problem I have with it is it's just a lack of talent. Right. I've, and I've said this time and time again. The Lions are going to be good in two years because I do believe in Dan Campbell. I like a coach that's that passionate, and I love this staff. He did exactly what the next coach that I'm going to talk about didn't do. Mm -hmm. And who's that? That would be the coach of my fighting New York Jets, Rob Salah. Yeah. You made one great error in judgment, mm -hmm. and that's you hired a first-time rookie offensive coordinator, and it's coming back to bite you in the ding-ding. Because Michael LaFleur has been an absolute joke. The reason I have the Jets for, ahead of the bottom four teams, they have more talent. Mm -hmm. Straight up. You, you cannot look at the four teams below them and go, well, they're more talented than the Jets. No, no they're not. No, they're not. Allie Vera tucker has been just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Becton's good when he's on the field. Mm -hmm. The receiving core is the receiving core is elite, unfortunately. It's kind of like having a Maserati and you can't drive a stick. Uh, Zach Wilson can't get on the ball. Right. The Jets are the team in the bottom five, and, and trust me, there is a clear delineation for me between the bottom five and the next five. Mm -hmm. They're the team I look at and go, if you ever figured it out, you would be the best of, of this bunch, and you might get into that next tier. I the other four, you're stuck here. Yeah. Because you don't have, I mean, you're rebuilding, and you don't have any talent. Mm -hmm. Mike LaFleur is the reason I drink many days a week. But why is it Mike LaFleur's problem that Zach Wilson can't find his can't find his receivers? Because there's more to it. Uh, the the sign of a bad offensive coordinator is that you don't score on scripted plays. Mm -hmm. How many touchdowns the Jets have in the first half this year? Zero. It's zero. That's a horrid sign for an offensive coordinator. Yeah. And you watch the game plan and the way they lay things out. It's almost like he forgets to run sometimes. Like, oh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to, that, that's a thing I'm supposed to do as well. And it's just a sign of a first-time offensive coordinator. I look at the Jets and go, this is a team that's figuring it out. But wouldn't it be better if you had an actual running back you believed in? Well, yeah, they do. It's his name Michael, Michael Carter. Carter. Uh, the only problem is that he gets nine touches a game. Right. Which is stupid. So if he got 15 to 16 touches a game, you feel like this offense would be better? Nothing ever gets in rhythm. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I, this is one of those things. It's kind of like you know Nancy Reagan said about porn. I can't really explain it to you, but if you sat here and watched it with me, I could I could show you and go, that, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many off-script plays that just don't make any sense. Zach Wilson will make a great throw, and then you run right into the ass of the center for a two-yard loss. Or you'll have a, an actual decent run, and then you play action, boot Zach Wilson, and everybody in the stadium knew what was coming. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can call out the play call. Now, I've watched every single snap of New York Jets football this this year. Yeah. So, I, but I feel like the teams you're playing have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I just don't feel like you're putting him in the best, best position to succeed. Right. I mean, I feel bad talking crap about Michael Carter. I mean, obviously, he loved the kid. He was a Tar Heel. Mm -hmm. And he's got a lot of talent. I just... I just don't know. I guess maybe it is the game plan. Maybe it is it's the game plan that is keeping him plan. keeping him in check. Uh, there's a reason that if your ears really burn when you're being talked about, Mike LaFleur's head would have been on fire. Yeah. Because he has been a constant topic in New York media. Mm -hmm. And now people are lumping Rob Salah in it like, how did you not see this coming? Right. You're a first-time head coach. You brought in a first-time coordinator. Yeah, weird. Uh, that, that's, that hasn't started well. Mm -hmm. It's the Wade Phillips effect. 
It's why I'm so complimentary of Dan Campbell, because he went out and said, hey, you know what I don't know how to do? Game manage. You know who does? A guy that was a head coach for years in this league. Yeah. Hey, let's make him the offensive coordinator. Is he good at it? No. But can he explain to me how to do it? Yeah. All right, so your Jets are the top of the trash five. And then... I mean, and that's kind of like saying, you know, you have the... Oh, this this is a good place for a good analogy. <laughs> It's kind of like saying you have the prettiest toes at a footless convention. You know, okay. I don't know what a footless convention is, but <laughs> look, I'm tired. Okay, <laughs> I've slept convention. about nine minutes in the last three days. So <laughs> this is this is amputees are us. That, that, hey, that'll work. This Am, that was the that was that's the word I was looking for. for fuck. <laughs> I missed an opportunity there. I will be better next time. Missed it by that much. The Atlanta Falcons at 27. In your power rankings, this is where I had the New York Giants. I just, I, I mean, I feel like the Giants are a better team than the Falcons. Uh, I would, too, except, oh, wait, they already played and lost. Dead. They're all dead. Uh, no, they lost. You lost to the Falcons. I, I, you can't say, oh, they're better. They lost to them at home. Mm-hmm. That's, results do matter. Okay. I, I think all if right. they played ten times, I'd take the Falcons six of them. Do I think they're drastically better when, when the Giants are healthy? No. Mm -hmm. Giants aren't healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that they're going to be. I disagree. How much do results matter? You think the Bears are better than the Raiders? See, I see that's kind of the same thing. But no, but, but and see, to me, and, and to me, that line is stupid because nobody with an IQ above salad dressing thinks that the Bears are better than the Raiders. Mm -hmm. There were extenuating circumstances there. Mm -hmm. What were the extenuating circumstances in Falcons Giants? Oh, right. oh you're at home? Oh, cool. That's uh, in your favor. They have a shitload of rookies playing also in your favor, mm. and you still lost. Yeah. The Giants had everything working for them. The Falcons had nothing working for them, and they still beat them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that has to be – you have to put that in the back of your – I'm not saying it's the end-all, be-all, but it has to count. Right. Don't, I don't worry. We'll get to the Raiders soon enough. <laughs> I, have a, I have a definitive tenor on the Raiders. All right, at number 26 in this week's power rankings, this is where I have the Miami Dolphins slotted in because I don't believe in them at all. This is where I have the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears. Uh, yeah, this is how dog water the bottom 10 teams in the NFL are. I don't even have the Dolphins in it. No, we don't have to wait real long to get them. Say, we better Once get the rest soon. of this side of the column comes up. I was going to say, we better get there soon. Uh, the Chicago Bears. Miami's one of those that the, goes to talent. Mm-hmm. They had the win, the 20-9 to win over the Las Vegas Raiders this past week. Obviously a very distracted Raiders team with the things that were going on. Justin Fields, he's not, he's, he just hasn't put it together yet. It's the best way I could put that. He didn't turn the ball over, which I feel like is, has got to be a win in their case. They found two running backs to fill in for David Montgomery. I didn't, I, I didn't knock them much this week. In fact, I'd, I, I'd, I'd, I'd raised them on my power I, rankings. I, I did too, a spot. Actually, actually, the lie, I raised them several spots because they were 31 last week, I think. Oh, God. If they weren't 31, they were 30. Yeah. They came up a few spots for me. I take absolutely nothing from their win over the Raiders mm -hmm. uh, because the Raiders were distracted with the Gruden thing. If you played that game 10 times, how many times are you going to win it? Mm -hmm. Not many. No. So... I, I still look at the Bears and go, you're a team that can't score points, and you're the worst 3-2 and two team I have ever seen. <laughs> Steven Tao said, I just don't like Fields. Uh, do you? Do Has I like he Fields? done any, I, I don't, no. anybody? That's a rhetorical question. Does yeah. anybody like Justin Fields at this point? Not yet. What has he done to make? He's been god-awful. In one of the worst opening months of a rookie class in NFL history, he has been clearly the worst mm -hmm. of, of the bunch to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, no, I don't like Justin Fields. And, I, and I've said a hundred times, I don't like the connection with, with Nagy. Yeah. Now, if you bring in a quarterback coach that can play to his strengths, okay. Well, when you fire Nagy, and you're going to. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, you ever heard that term hubris comes, slow, it comes shortly before the fall? Yeah. Uh, have you looked at the Bears schedule moving forward? I haven't committed it to memory, no. You know, here's, the, here, here's just, nah, let's go to the next, let's go to the next five games. Okay. Uh, Packers, 
Yeah, that's a loss. Uh, Buccaneers. Loss. 49ers. Loss. At the Steelers. Loss. Baltimore Ravens. Loss. Okay, there we go. That's. Oh, and then on a short week, you get to play at the Lions on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's a loss, too. Just throwing it out there. Oh, you think the, the Lions will finally get a win then? Uh, I do. Okay. All right. We shall see. Um, Steven Tao. Let's see. I want to make sure I'm... Uh, no, Jason Trump in the comments said that the Bears' defense special teams should make them a little higher, maybe 22 or 21-ish. But it's not good. It's, it's, it's not good. The they defense? Can do th what did the Rams do to them? What did an, a, a, a half-assed well, offense the do? The backside of the defense is not good. The backside the, of the defense is terrible. Right. Khalil Mack can get pressure. Right. The front side of the Akeem defense Hicks is good. Hicks is a talented player. We. There is nothing about that team that makes me feel all warm and googly inside. Me. Right. They were my 24 this week. So Steven Tao said Lawrence has been the poopiest of the poopy poop. Uh, he's still been better than Justin Fields. His high side has been uh, drastically better than Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. And he's literally working with one arm tied behind his back. Because Urban Meyer is stupid. Mm-hmm. Yes, Alex Sander, we have all forgotten. Because Nick Foles is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Nick Foles, they actually change the locks on him like once a week. His yeah. his his locker is now in the basement, and he keeps asking people if right. they know where his tape works. Right. Yeah. He's got a desk right next to Milton. Yeah. I'm gonna going to blow up the building. Set the building on fire. Set the building on fire. <laughs> I believe uh, you have my stapler. Uh, Nick, Nick Foles is gross. We don't care that he's a world champion. He is not going to help this team. That's like saying Trent Dilfer was a world champion. Uh, cool. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. And, and Cooper got approved for a Visa card. We all had a good day. <laughs> yeah, I had the Bears up at 24 this week. I just, I, I feel like there is some fight in that team, and the defense to me is still, still too good to have them in the, uh, in the dregs of the dregs. Hey, when the Zombie Raiders walked in, they, uh, they actually won. So, mm -hmm. you know, good for you. Hey, you gotta, how much does that mean to me? You got to take it game by Not game. Not shit. It's one game at a time, baby. Just, just, just trudging forward. Uh, all right, next. The, the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles at number twenty-five. Hey, how much do I care that I, that they beat the Carolina Panthers? Uh, I care more about the Philadelphia Eagles ball boy sex life. I care more about what brand of shoelaces Nick Sirianni wears. Okay. Because he's a bad coach. Okay. Flat out, he is a bad coach. Okay. So explain why you don't why that uh, the win against the Panthers was not a good win for them. Because the Panthers lost, the Eagles didn't win. If I give you the ball on the twenty yard line, uh, which they did, mm -hmm. and you don't score, that's on you. Oh, they blocked the kick. Yeah, go back and watch why. Mm-hmm. It's a completely botched block scheme. It's completely botched. Okay. I feel like Carolina walked into that game like, hey, we're going to win because we showed up with a living, breathing pulse. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, r r be really honest with yourself. If you don't turn the ball over to Jalen Hurts, can he beat you? Any no, team. No. I, I'm talking the Jacksonville Jaguars. Play Philadelphia, and they don't turn the ball over, can Jalen Hurts beat me? I feel like they could. I, don't, I do not agree with you. Why? Because he can't score. Because he's not good. Can he put up stats? Sure. When you're dropping four on every play. But against the worst team in the league? I think he's better than that. If you told me there were no turnovers mm -hmm. and Jacksonville played Philadelphia, I'd take Jacksonville. Okay. I've, I mean, I feel like that's... They could at least run. Right. Philadelphia has a coach that doesn't understand that every once in a while you have to run the fucking ball. Right. Not with your... And not with your quarterback. Right. It's a listless franchise. Mm -hmm. The defense, the front four on defense is good enough to make this team 25. Yeah. I don't like one other thing about this team. The receiving course sucks. You don't use your best player, which I'm going to hold against you. Mm -hmm. I mean, straight up, the fact that you look at your best player and go, ah, fuck him. He doesn't need touches. Ah, yeah. fuck him. Miles Sanders. Yeah, Stop I'm going to hold that against you. No, I still believe that they're better than the New England Patriots, who you have at number 24. I think 24. New England would toy with them. I do. I think New England would toy. A, a, a good defensive tactician like Bill Belichick would look mm -hmm. at Jalen Hurts and go, cool, I'm going to put 10 in the box. Yeah. And I'm going to dare you to throw one deep on me. No shot. 
they played the New England Patriots right now on a, on a neutral field, and that was less than a touchdown spread. I'd take mm -hmm. New England. I'd bet my house on it. After that game that they just had Don't with care. Houston, Texas. Don't care. Okay. Trap game. New England's in the exact same spot I had them last week. All right. Nothing changed for me with New England. Yeah. I do have Philadelphia ahead of New England in my power rankings, uh, but I have them ahead of several. And here's what I well. don't think. Here's what the part of this that I don't think you seem to grasp. Okay. If New England played Philadelphia right now, you're honest to God telling me you'd take Philadelphia. I'd take Philadelphia. You're drunk. No this is why asked. you don't bet for a living. Because that is comically dumb to me. What do they do better than New England? Name me one thing Philadelphia does better than New England. Pass rush? Oh, okay, you get Fletcher Cox, I get Matthew Judon. It's pretty mm -hmm. close. Mm -hmm. Secondary? Not even close. Mm -hmm. Running game? I win. Mm -hmm. Quarterback? Better I'm way. better. Coach? I'm better. Name me anything Philadelphia does better. Oh, but but you but New England almost lost to Houston. Yeah. And and that's bad. Okay, the Bears beat the Raiders. Do you uh, see this is what's maddening to me by the way you do this. Some games matter and some don't. And it only seems to be the ones that happened within the last seven days. Mm -hmm. that, that seems to be all that matters to you. And I don't get that. Because there is, and we've talked about this enough times, that there is not a fiber of your body that thinks that Philadelphia would beat New England if you had not seen what happened Sunday. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. But four weeks of the season just get thrown out the window. Because that would have been laughable to you a week ago. Mm -hmm. Fact or fiction? Probably. There you go. This is what, and this is why you throw dirt on teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Oh, Ben was terrible. Cool. You think he will keep being? I didn't either. Right. I, I, I mean, and I'm not trying to slight you. It's just it's maddeningly no, I it. inconsistent. I, I understand. But to me, your, your outcomes do matter. And I get that, but they all matter. Mm -hmm. Not just the one that happened the most recently. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia plays Carolina 10 times. How many times Carolina win? Uh, 9.75. There you go. So, you, so what you're saying is that was a fluke. Yeah. And yet you're letting it control the narrative on where a team goes. Mm -hmm. Do you not remember what the Dallas Cowboys did to this? I mean, they embarrassed them on national television. Yes. Embarrassed them. And I understand the Cowboys are good. I get mm -hmm. it. That's kind, I of get my, it. that's kind of my point is you showed up a, a, in a game that you should have won, in my opinion, if you're a good team by a lot, and you had to come from behind to beat Houston? I, see, I, don't, ca I, see, I don't care how much you win by. Yeah. I, I could give a fuck less. Mm -hmm. Baltimore Ravens, they had to come from behind to beat the Indianapolis Colts. you think mm -hmm. they're better? No. There you go. But, they're, but, but Indianapolis, because of that victory, is markedly better this week than I thought they were. Mm, they're not for me. Okay. And then they went up, I think they went up a spot. Mm -hmm. You can't close. You can't win. I, I just don't care. I, I don't care that Houston, Houston ran six trick plays in the first half. Right. Cool. You know who does that? High schools and bad ones. That, that's who does that. Yep. I watched that with Houston and went, cool, you're throwing the kitchen sink at them. I, and I'm not going to lie to you, I had Houston plus 10. I live bet New England every time the line changed. Mm -hmm. Every time Houston scored, I live bet New England. And it worked out swimmingly for me. Right. It just doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Alexander says, wait a minute, are you telling me that Darius Slay isn't better than the Walmart kid that New England has out there with no Gilmore? Uh, you mean J.C. Jackson, who was a pro bowler last year? <laughs> I Is guess. That that the one I don't know who he's to? referring to. Are you referring to Jonathan Jones, who was an alternate pro bowler last year? They don't have a one, but the secondary is markedly better. Right. Darius Slay has been absolutely abused by good receivers. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the highest of the high end. He, yeah, he... He was on DJ Moore a lot this week, too, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, there's nothing about Philadelphia that makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Yeah. Philadelphia. I feel like we should be sponsored by the term. The, the, the term warm and fuzzy should be the, 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 the word of the <laughs> day. It, it, it has had a fuzzy feel to this morning, uh, and, which is shocking because I don't think you went out drinking last night. Nope. It's the least fuzzy. Uh, no, I was been here until almost time. 10 o'clock <laughs> and then was back here for a meeting at 7. Right. So if I'm a little cantankerous, maybe that's why. Uh, anyhow, I feel like Philadelphia can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and beat pretty much 12 teams in the league any week. Oh, that makes me want that makes me want to make you put your money where your mouth is. Okay. Stand by. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. 
Houston. All right, here's the Eagles. Uh, th this is the remaining schedule. Yep. Tampa Bay. Uh, Slaughtered. At Vegas. Not going to happen. Okay. That's not competing with 12 teams in the league. At Vegas. Where do you have Vegas? Uh, Las Vegas. You is think at they can beat 12 teams in the league? Mm hmm. All right. So uh, Vegas it's is at 15. No shot at league. 15. That is a market jump. All right, let's glean past that. Mm -hmm. You're betting your house on them to go to Detroit and beat Detroit? Yeah. Mm, all right, let's do yeah. it. I believe I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Detroit can't win, and Philadelphia finds a way to. I'll be honest with you. On, on Halloween, after two just drag you down the sidewalk losses, mm -hmm. I'd take Detroit. You think they'll be so battered and broken that they won't be ready for no, a win by No, I just don't think they're point? good. I don't think they're good. Mm -hmm. And it is really... I feel like one fluky win is changing the fact that we watched them get just drugged down the sidewalk two out of three weeks before that. Mm -hmm. And Jalen Hurts is throwing for 300 yards a game and nobody's going, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, with Detroit. Who, who has the better coach? It's Detroit, oh, it's and I Detroit. think it's Detroit by a yeah. mile. Who's a better quarterback? It's Detroit. And I'm at home. Mm -hmm. That's the Jeremy rule. That's the Jeremy trifecta. It is the Jeremy trifecta. All right, I would have said, the same, I the said the, Yeah, I would have said the same thing about Carolina, though. And it was a fluke, and you've already said that. It, yeah. Flukes do happen. Mm hmm And they actually happen like once a week in the NFL. You're right. You're right. Uh, the Washington football team. Number 23. We didn't talk much about New England. Uh, yeah, yeah, nothing I mean, changed for me. Your upside's low. You'll mm -hmm. beat bad teams. Mm -hmm. And you're going to struggle more often than you want to. Mm -hmm. And your schedule is brutal. Yep. And I believed more in you last week. After seeing you, after seeing you against Houston, they dropped in my power rankings. Nothing in the, in the Patriots-Texans game changed a damn thing that I think about either of those teams. Mm-hmm. I thought David Culley had this team as uh, they were a little spunky anyway because they got about 900 veterans on this team. Right. It changes nothing for me. It changes nothing. Uh, the New England, or excuse me, the Washington football team, you got them at number 23. Uh, I have them at 22, so we're not very far off on that. Washington just defensive. doesn't do anything well. You have Antonio Gibson, you have Terry McLaurin. Yeah. I mean, Terry McLaurin, and I don't remember exactly how the stat went, but I think he had 13 targets this past week and he caught four of them. Mm hmm. It was the worst game by far, I think, that Taylor Heineke has played since he became the starter of this team. And it's just inefficient. The mm -hmm. defense is bad. Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot for me to like. I but mean, there's a lot to you like with more. the team. There's they have a lot of talent. Well, that's what I was getting ready to right. say. But in terms of five games through the season, what have they done that you go, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. uh, it run inconsistently. Taylor Heineke can score against teams that are blowing them out. There's just there's not a lot there, and the defense is fucking dreadful. Agreed. Which is not something I even vaguely envisioned I would be saying this year, but no, I am no. Uh, at number twenty-two, the ah, next the tier. rest of the the rest of the shat tier. <laughs> at number twenty-two, that's where you have the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I told you you wouldn't have to wait on them long. Mm-hmm. That's another team. I, it just what do you do well? Nothing. Nothing. They do nothing well. They can't defend the pass well. They're one of the worst teams in the league at defending the pass, despite the fact that you have all pro-level players in your secondary. I cannot figure out figure that out for the life of me. Um, you, you don't run the ball. You can't run the ball. Yeah, I mean, this past week you found some, you found some nice little fun little plays with Miles Gaskin in a blowout game mm -hmm. against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Jacoby and Miles Brissett. Gaskin's still bad. Mm -hmm. Jacoby Brissett's still bad. Mm -hmm. I like your receivers. That's about it. I do too, but I don't like who's getting the ball. Yeah. I like your corners, but you couldn't. You couldn't literally. If you dusted some of the quarterbacks they played against for fingerprints, mm -hmm. uh, ninety percent of the Miami Dolphins wouldn't even be suspects. <laughs> I, I don't get this Miami Dolphins team. It is bad, and and with every passing week, I'm coming more and more to your side of Brian Flores needs to be gone. Yeah, he's a bad coach. I had them at 26 this week in my power rankings. I just I can't get down with you on any level. 
So who do you have? Who, who do you have in them behind? Oh, let's see. Where are we at right now? We're at twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have the Washington football team ahead of them. Mm, and to me, they're the exact same team, and I'd rather have Jacoby Brissett than Taylor mm-hmm. Heineke. Yep. I think I'm going to disagree on that one. Uh, uh, neither s- one's good, but Jacoby Brissett's at least been in the league for a while. Uh, I got Seattle ahead of them. I got the Chicago Bears ahead of them. Well, I have Seattle ahead of them. Seattle's the team we're going to get to because uh, yeah. I didn't think that my hatred was going to get passed on this show, and yet here we are. Was going to get passed? Mm-hmm. You, you now hate the the Seattle Seahawks more than I do. Without Russell Wilson, this is a god awful team. Mm-hmm. You have Geno Smith as your quarterback. We'll get to them in a you minute. You dropped no, completely just... off the atmosphere for me, but like I said, we'll get to them in a second when we get to the official power rankings here with uh, Jeremy's list. Um, but I have the Bears ahead of them. The Patriots are ahead of them. I, they're a bad team. They're not good. No. To me, there's not a lot of difference between all of them, though. Yeah. I mean, there's just looking at the list that is. Do you really see a lot of difference between the Miami Dolphins, Washington football team, New England Patriots, Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Bears, Atlanta Falcons? No. No. I swear to you, you could interchange every one of those teams, and I'm not going to, I ain't going to be mad about it. Mm hmm. And that's where I, that's where I'm at. It's just every, this is this is a very very gross tier of the NFL right now because I think there is a sizable gap in between the Miami Dolphins at number 22 and the Minnesota Vikings at 21. Hmm. I would say there's a gap. I don't know how sizable it is. And so, and, and so this is another thing that I don't, uh, that I, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. So Minnesota should have lost to Detroit, right? Yeah, I mean, it took a last second. But you're holding that against, uh, you're holding that same thing against New England, and you're not holding it against Minnesota. Because there's a marked no, difference. No, because I think, I think Detroit is a better team than New England. Or Houston. Houston. Yeah, I think Detroit's better than Houston. So I do too, but not by much. And they're not drastically better. Not drastically. I think the way they play is different. The vibe around that team is completely different. I don't see them being, being completely listless like the Houston Texans are. And see, to me, the, the makeup in that is that game was in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. You almost lost to them in your house. Mm-hmm. To me, that makes them equivalent. Okay. I really slam teams for losing in their own building. That you cannot lose to a bad team in your own house. Yeah. Now playing on the road in the NFL is tough. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck who you're playing. I don't care if you're playing the Houston Texans, the Jets. It's tough to play on the road. Yeah. Minnesota Vikings at number twenty-one. I mean, Dalvin Cook goes out. They've got the they've got the 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 number two. Alexander Madison proved once again he can come in and be just as effective. As Dal, as uh, Dalvin Cook, maybe not just as effective, but you get what I'm saying. That offense doesn't really skip much of a beat when he's out there. He's a good back. Mm-hmm. I just uh, there's uh, Minnesota's just an incomplete team to me, mm-hmm. much like the team at twenty. Mm-hmm. And number twenty, the Indianapolis Colts. Monday night was fun. Damn it, Monday night was fun but until it wasn't. You, you're right, but I guess you. It, it, you just got you got too conservative, and then and then you decided to go throw for throw with Lamar Jackson, and that's that not going to work. Well. Carson Wentz had a great first three quarters, and it's not like he was completely horrible down the stretch, but still, maybe this is the sign that we need that Carson Wentz can be effective in this offense. I gave them a lot of props for for the past game. Just Evan Doyle wins the Jonathan prize Taylor. of the day. Of I yeah. was curious how long it was going to take for somebody to notice that there's a team not on this half of the screen. Oh, okay. We'll get to them in a minute. Okay, we'll get to them in a minute. Oh, I know what team he's talking about. Uh, they would have been for me. I couldn't put them on the other half of the screen. They're going to be close. They're going to be real close for Jeremy. I can tell you that. 
I don't know. To me, Minnesota is – they're a team that has a lot of potential, and it's because of their offensive firepower. Yeah, but I hate the defense. I hate the coach. Mm-hmm. There's it Just for me, okay, you're the best of the – Mm-hmm. And even then, I look at it and go, if you played Indianapolis, I'd have an, I, I would take Indianapolis. Absolutely. I have Indianapolis ahead of them uh, on my power rankings. I just think Mike Zimmer's lost this team, and I'll be honest with you, I think this is the last game he coaches for the Minnesota Vikings. Because I think they are going to get absolutely fucking dump trucked against the is, the Carolina Panthers this week. Because mm-hmm. that game is in Carolina, and Carolina is a little pissed. And they should be. And hopefully this will be a bounce back week for Sam Darnold. I think it will be. Because I put much of the responsibility for that loss on him. Throwing mm-hmm. those three See, to me, it's more on the line. Yeah, and that's the one thing that scares me with Minnesota is that Daniil Hunter might torture Brady Christensen. Mm, I think he's going to. And I still don't care. <laughs> okay. Next up on the power rankings, the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis at 20. Didn't we just talk about them? No, we are just talking about Minnesota. Okay. Monday night was fun. I remember saying that. Yeah, but then you didn't say anything else. It went back to Minnesota. <laughs> they just don't. I mean, I and, think Car- and, and I'll be honest with you, that's probably the best analogy we can make for the Colts. Yeah. Uh, hey, headline and no substance. Mm-hmm. I will say that version of Carson Wentz gives me a little pause that they could still win the division, and then I look at the schedule and just go, No, no, you won't. No, I don't think they have a shot at winning this division. I was reading something earlier this morning that said, oh, the South is wide open in the AFC. No, it's not. To me, the Tennessee Titans are still head and shoulders, knees and toes above everybody else. And until Indianapolis can show me some consistency, I'm going to continue to believe that. Denver Broncos at number 19. We're not far off on this. I've got them at 20. And they're going to keep falling. Because mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're going to good. keep losing. I haven't moved the Denver Broncos in five weeks. Mm-hmm. More than five spots mm-hmm. total. They stay right in this nebulous area. The, everybody, you They've know, been a lot 17 of people to got, 21 every right. time we've done this. A little people, uh, you know, or a, a small portion of people got duped by the fact that they started out 3-0 and against bad teams. And now the last two weeks, they have lost consecutive matchups against teams that are just frankly better than them and now they've got to go or, and they really weren't uh, neither of them were really all that close mm-hmm. i mean the steelers score got close and yeah they had a shot but that i, I blame that way more on pittsburgh than i give credit to denver mm-hmm. oh it shows fight it shows grit you can say all of those things but then this week you've got to host the las vegas raiders who have good haven't, Motherfucking right. luck with that. Right, who have a new coach now. There's going to be a new fire in that locker room. Of uh, They're going to get that swing. Remember, our, what was it, last year when Dan Quinn got fired in Atlanta and Raheem Morris came in? Do you remember what happened to the Atlanta Falcons? They finally showed some fight and started playing pretty well. I think that same thing could happen here with the Vegas Raiders. As long as they, you know, as long as, uh, what's his first name? Ryan? Ryan Basaccia? Rick Basaccia? Doesn't sound right. What is R? Why do I have an R in my in, in my head? Anyway. Uh, I don't know, but now you got now you got stuck in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Rich Basaccia. Rich Basaccia. That's it. I think Rich Basaccia will come in and he'll be able to fire this team up, get them back on track. And I don't like Denver's chances, despite the fact that they're at home. Then they gotta go to Cleveland after that. And you can get a Washington football team. But then you're going to get smoked like a honey ham against the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas it's, the next it's week. It's not pretty. No, it's going. you're going to find out very quickly that this Denver team is, is not a playoff caliber team. They are right in the middle of the mishmash of the NFL. Seven and nine, somewhere in that area. Or seven and ten. I forgot about the 17 game. Uh, Alex Sander has made a comment about the next two teams that makes me want to cover them together. Okay. Pittsburgh Steelers at 18, Seattle Seahawks at 17. Okay. He said, how do you have the Seahawks ahead of the Steelers? I want what you're drinking. You do know Russell Wilson didn't die, right? Like, he didn't 
He could be back in four weeks. Maybe. Uh, it's still a possibility, right? Mm -hmm. Four weeks of Russell Wilson, they're better than the Steelers. It's not close. It's not even close. Now, if he misses eight weeks, okay. Mm -hmm. But what? Look, I mean, they got to play this week, uh -huh. and you should fa you should you should heavily favor Pittsburgh in that, wouldn't you think? Uh, agreed. Playing at home. Uh, without Russell Wilson, yeah, I agree. Yeah. If Russell Wilson played in this game, how would you feel about it? Oh, I'd be on Seattle. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, because after this, they the, the Seahawks still have a date with the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. They have a date with the Washington football team. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think they can go into Pittsburgh and win this game. Mm -hmm. I won't be shocked if they do. I will be. I won't. Geno Smith leads them to a victory. I... This is another team that we have crossed. We, we've crossed streams. Mm -hmm. You were too low on Pittsburgh forever, and now I now I feel like you do realize Seattle's top to bottom better than them, right? Like the biggest thing we the the biggest thing we knock Seattle for is your line sucks. It's yeah. exponentially better than Pittsburgh. I mean, I agree with exponentially better than Pittsburgh. I agree with that. And I'll and I'll level with you. You, you want to know how I really, how I really feel, and why I really have them here? Yeah, I don't know that Geno Smith's that much worse of a quarterback than Ben Roethlisberger is right now. I'm not saying he's good. I'm just saying be really fucking honest with yourself. <laughs> Geno Smith's one of the best backup quarterbacks in the NFL. He at least has starting experience. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I could go through so a list of teams and who their backups are. <laughs> right. Geno's in the top ten of the league. Yeah. Ben's in the bottom five of starters in the NFL. Okay. I don't think it's that different. If I ranked yeah. quarterbacks in the NFL from 1 to 50, I'd have been in the mid-30s, and I'd have Geno in the high 40s. How much do you think they can score, though, without Russell Wilson? See, that's where my mind went to was, I don't see how they score. I don't really believe in the secondary of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everything okay. for me is on T.J. Watt. Mm -hmm. So how do you get around that? You simplify the game plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're going to do with Geno Smith. Geno Smith is a dink and dunk quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's what he did at West Virginia. That's what he did with the Jets. Mm -hmm. How do you beat a team with a bad secondary and a good pass rush? Dinky dunky. I'm literally talking myself into taking the Steelers. You are. I, I'm talking myself into taking the Seahawks. Yeah. We don't have to pick games for two days, but I'm starting to think that I might have a little <laughs> bit of a lean on that one. Without Russell, Especially against the number. With, without Russell Wilson, to me, this, uh, this season is headed down the toilet. He had screws put in, so he's going to be gone at least six weeks. That's all I've heard. I think four weeks is off the table. It could be eight weeks. And if that's the case, they're going to lose most of these games. And, and like, I'm and, not, I'm not gonna, I, they're not going to be so bad that they'll lose to Jacksonville in three weeks. But they ain't, I don't think they're going to beat anybody else. Uh, Steven Tao said this is a power ranking, not a standings list. People confuse that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russell Wilson didn't die. At the end of the day, uh, if you can mitigate, let's say it's four to six weeks, if you can mitigate this tide for the and, and go two and four, uh, uh, three and three, <sighs> I, I'm not saying I'm not asking a lot. <laughs> so that's a tough task. I'm not saying it's not a lot. But if, if you do and Russell comes back, they're exponentially better than the yeah. Steelers. Yeah, in the next six weeks, you got at Pittsburgh this week. Then you have uh, New Orleans on an odd week. So there's, there's, there's James Winston. Yeah. Then you got uh, Jacksonville the next week. You win that one. Then you get a bye. And then you're at the Green Bay Packers and against the Arizona Cardinals. I'm not giving them a shot to win any of those games except for Jacksonville. I don't agree with you. They can beat Pittsburgh. They can beat Jacksonville. Hell, I wouldn't be shocked if they beat the Saints. Mm -hmm. The Saints are so, I mean, I make jokes about even and odd weeks, but they're so Jekyll and Hyde, I don't know what team's going to show up. Right. So, I mean, I, would I be shocked? No. No. Okay. I don't know. And then at that point, you've lost, you've lost so many games in a row. You're not, I mean, obviously, Russell Wilson coming back is going to make a big difference. But, I don't know. I, I, I'm off this team. At least for the next six weeks. Uh, and I'm not. You get I, and I'm not on them. They, no, they dropped it. markedly without Russell Wilson, but he didn't die. Mm -hmm. And this is not who I would take 
it's not just who would I take this week. Rest of the season. Yep. You have to take All right, let's do, let me do it like this. Rest of the season, you have to pick who wins more games. Seattle Seahawks, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Not knowing how long Russell Wilson's going to be out. Mm -hmm. You betting your house on Pittsburgh? No, I wouldn't. Okay, then that's not. Then that makes that not that spicy, spicy. Mm -hmm. Because I'll go ahead and tell you, I probably would bet my house on Seattle. (laughs) All right, now the the witching hour is upon us, and we haven't gotten to the top half of the power rankings yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going a little slower than we usually do. <laughs> uh, to the everything not in the top ten. Yep. Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals are 16 for me. Gosh. I had them at 17 this week. I couldn't put them up in the top 16. I couldn't put them in the top half of the league. The Cincinnati Bengals are 16 for me. Yep. The Cincinnati Bengals are 16 for me. <laughs> I have to keep saying this out loud to make myself understand that I actually did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how can you not, though, after the Green Bay game? I mean, shows a lot of fortitude, and guess what? The, the, the Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase connection continues to look like it gets better and better every week. Mm, they've proved it. They're, they're one team that has proved that they are way better than we thought they were. We thought they were going to be constantly in the shit tier of the league all season long, and guess what? They're not anymore. Some people think they're a playoff caliber team. We do not. But I think the bottom half they of the league can be. is. I, I'm, I, I'm not going to get away. You're going to hear me say this 500 times over mm-hmm. the next nine months. Mm-hmm. This is the L.A. Chargers. Yeah. In one calendar year, this team's the L.A. Chargers right now. I'm not telling you they can get into the where the Chargers are in my power rankings this week. Uh, or in tanks. I, I think we're in pretty lockstep with. I don't remember exactly where you had them. The Cincinnati Bengals? No, the Chargers. Oh, the Chargers? Yeah, I don't think the there. Bengals have that level of high side that quick mm-hmm. because I don't think Burrow's as good as Herbert. Mm-hmm. I see it going the Put a couple of all pros way. on that offensive line like Los Angeles did. I see it going the you exact same You get him a damn way. good coach like Joe Brady, fuck yeah, you're going to be up there. There you go. You'll that's, be in the top that's ten. That's exactly how I see this going. You'll be in the top ten easily next week because or next year. Because they're going to lose games that they shouldn't mm-hmm. because Zach Taylor is maddening and that offensive line sucks. Mm-hmm. But they're going to win some games. Yep. I mean, this team's going to be 5-2. and two. Mm-hmm. And then they may not win a game for a while. But then they may not win another game. But the offense is good. Jamar Chase is better than I thought. This team's better than I thought. I, I wish you had any other coach. But the Cincinnati Bengals are at 16 for me. Mm-hmm. Number 15. The New Orleans Saints. I don't know what you are, and it's starting to piss me off. <laughs> one week on, one week off. Are we going to deal with this all season long? No, we're not, because the talent's going to come back to this team next week. And that's kind of why they're here, mm-hmm. is I think when, when Michael Thomas shows back up and everybody can go back into the, to the spot that I couldn't put them above Carolina. Yep. I know Carolina lost Philadelphia. I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. Carolina also just beat the bejesus out of them in Charlotte. So I, I look at those two teams and go, I still don't 100% know what you are. Mm-hmm. There's a good, there's a bad. And if we see more good of New Orleans this year than we see bad, then I've got them too low. If that bad shows up that happened against the Panthers and the Giants, then I got them too high. I think it's hilarious. We, we both have them ranked together. The Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. Because to me right now, they're the same team. Yeah. And I have them, uh, I have the Panthers just ahead of the Saints as you do. But they're my they're my 13 and 14. This is where I have the Las Vegas Raiders. See, and I can't ding the Raiders that much. Mm-hmm. I need to see how you respond. I need to see how you're going to respond from this before I can... I can feel good about you putting you ahead of a, of teams that I, you know, one I loosely believe in in the New Orleans Saints and one that I really believe in, but I think their quarterback had a shit week last week. And, and I want to see him not fall into a, a slump. And this is the discrepancy with how you, with how you rank and how I rank. Mm-hmm. I want to see you fall off. You want to see them prove something that, in my opinion, they've already proven. Okay. I think you're forecasting too much here. Okay. Rick, the whole staff has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. And there's a high possibility that this team's going to band together and go, hey, you remember that little Chucky doll looking fucker that was our coach start this year? Yep. Fuck that guy. Yep. 
And that's what I think is going to happen. I think they'll ba- this will band them together, and they may actually be better. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one I worry about is Derek Carr. Because at the end of the day, John Gruden was good with quarterbacks, no matter what you want to say. And I'm not talking about you. It's, I mean, it's metaphorical you. Right, right. I constantly hear, John Gruden was a quarterback whisperer with this sarcastic-ass fucking tone. Won a Super Bowl with Brad freaking Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was pretty good at this. So I, I, I'm not slamming the, the Raiders yet. I, and basically to me, and I've said this about other teams, I can't think of one off the top of my head. Last week was a burn the tape game. Mm-hmm. It was a, I don't know what the hell that was. Green Bay. Green Bay. Week Green one. Bay. Week burn one, Green Bay. Bury it's it. A burn. Find a big ass yep. hole and bury that tape in it. Yep. And that's how I feel about the Raiders. Mm-hmm. So I, for me, they didn't move much. They dropped four spots, I think. Right. But other than that, I can't. I, I can't hamper you too much. Yep. You got the Tennessee Titans in this group at number 13. Well, we didn't talk about the Panthers. Well, I mean, I mean yes, what are you going to say about them that, that we haven't already said? I mean, we believe in the talent of this team, but you just lost to Philadelphia in at a, home. In a game that was death by – that's the one thing I want to say is you lost Philadelphia in a game that was death by a thousand paper cuts. Mm-hmm. You cannot be that undisciplined and be as good of a team as – we all want to think you are. Bingo. And that's the problem. They're, I can't say they're the game that I'm the most interested in. Against Minnesota? They may very well be the game I'm the most interested in. Okay. In terms of what will change this going into next week. They lose to Minnesota, you're going to drop like a fucking rock. Mm-hmm. I mean like a rock. You win, you're probably not going to go up much, but you'll solidify your spot to me. Okay. Because now you're very volatile. Mm-hmm. You're as volatile as New Orleans is. Mm-hmm. Your good's very good, but I need to I need to see that game plan come together again. They didn't have an answer for Fletcher Cox. Yeah, or Josh Sweat, or any of the pass rushers for. And I look at Minnesota and go, "Hey, cool. We don't have to wait long for you to get another test." Yeah, because Daniil Hunter's gonna be a test. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted to say with Carolina. I just had to get that out. The Tennessee Titans continue to run the ball uh, very, very well with with Derrick Henry being the beast that he is. We know he's overworked. We know he's going to break at some point. But until he breaks, they're they're still one of the best teams in the league to me. I've literally said that so many times now that I'm just going to go full on Bruno Mars and say, don't believe me, just watch. Yep. So I'm not even commenting on Derrick Henry. Yeah. Here's the problem. AJ Brown and... Well, I mean, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, once once they get back together, maybe that all changes. I don't know because I think a lot of this is on Ryan Tannehill. Uh, the, the, in the offseason, I said something about, I'm really curious to see how much it affects Ryan Tannehill that Arthur Smith's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. And Tennessee Titans fans came to just blast me and say, oh, Ryan Tannehill does so much of this offense himself. Well, uh, if he does, he got dumb in the course of the last nine months because this offense does not look the same. Mm-hmm. The reason they're running Derrick Henry so much is because they don't trust anything else. And yes, they haven't had Julio Jones, and yes, A.J. Brown hasn't been... You know what I'm going to say that? Because I, I can't even blame A.J. Brown. Over a third of his passes have been completely uncatchable. Yep. That's, that's on Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm. That's on the offensive line that I don't particularly believe in mm-hmm. as a pass-blocking unit. A lot of people seem to forget that just because you're a good run-blocking team does not mean you're a good pass-blocking team. Right. There are a litany of players in the NFL that block really well for the run and can't do shit against the pass. Yep. And I'm starting to wonder if that's the Titans. I, I'm starting to think you're you're doing this not necessarily because you want to, because this is all you have. Mm-hmm. The Tennessee Titans, I have them a little higher than you do. They're, they're in my top ten. They're not in my top ten. Their defense is fucking awful. I get it. I get it, but they can still They're score in your a top whole 10? lot of points. Yeah. How? Yeah, they are in my top ten. How? Because I believe You that have them ahead better. of the San Francisco 49ers, don't you? Uh, Yes, I do. Oh, my God. Yes, I have them ahead of the San Francisco 49ers. That's not even close to me. <laughs> Literally, it's not even close to me. Right. I think San Francisco would dog the bejesus out of them. There's just not discipline enough on defense. And I don't mm-hmm. care who the quarterback is. Right. Debo Samuel will eat you alive if it's Jimmy Garoppolo, and Trey Lance will probably run for 200 yards on mm-hmm. you because you're not disciplined enough. 
Yeah, I did. I disagree with you vehemently on Tennessee. Uh, to be honest with you, I wanted to have Tennessee lower. The problem is that every team below them has gone, hey, look, we suck at yeah. least once. Mm -hmm. Most of them have done it twice. Mm -hmm. I have them ahead of the Cleveland Browns, who you have at uh, number 12 this week. I can't week. have them any higher than this. I can't either. I can't. They're my 12 as well. Your quarterback's in the 20s. I can't have you any higher than 12. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's all the talent in the world. I mean, it's all the things that you've heard me say about the Cleveland Browns forever. Yep. And it just is what it is. Yeah, you're super talented. I want you to, and we've already talked about the Raiders, so I want to show just the next five teams on this list. Okay. Let's see. Oh, wait, it's not the, it's the next seven teams on this list. I forgot, I forgot a slide. <laughs> uh, look at the teams in front of them. Outside of San Francisco, who has every bit as good a talent as they do and a quarterback with a higher ceiling, Look at the quarterbacks up here. Mm -hmm. Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott, Tommy Brady, Matthew Stafford, Baker Mayfield. Mm -hmm. One of those things is not like the others. One of those things just doesn't belong. Yep. And as long as that's the case, I'm going to have Cleveland at 12. I think Baker Mayfield just played his best game of the year. He was still just nominally above average, and it still wasn't enough to beat one of the teams ahead of him. Right. I don't see them moving out of this spot, but I don't there either. again, they're not bad enough to drop. Hell, they've been at 12 for me. I think mm -hmm. they've been at 12 for me three weeks in a row. Okay. I'm just looking at mine to, to see. Yeah. I mean, they've been in this range. I had them, I, I, they actually moved up one spot. This I don't week think I've some, moved their spot in two weeks. Yeah. They were, they've been 13 for me, and I moved them up to 12 this week just because I think that that showed a little something that you can, you can turn it on and you can score with a team that can score a whole bunch of points. To me, the only spot they could gain is ahead of the Raiders if the Raiders just fell apart, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's going to happen. And I'd still have 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. I would rather have Derek Carr to Baker Mayfield. Okay. Curtis Davis said, we made the top five. Let's, uh, let's go both up. Uh, yep, that's yep. the team that I – That's the. we posted a poll on our Sportsocracy Producers page, or, or we're posting a poll on our Sportsocracy Producers page at noon today. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to be a member of that, all you have to do is search Sportsocracy Producers on Facebook and join that group. We'll be doing polls with both shows and content things. There are a lot of things coming with that page. Uh, but we're going to put up a poll of who did I miss. The Chargers are one of the five. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't have them any lower. And I'd, it feels weird to have them that high. Yeah. But I think I'm right. I think that's where they belong. You might be. They're not that high for me yet. But they're trending in that direction. They're trending in that direction. And there are teams in front of them for me that are, that are going to have to prove that they don't belong anymore before Los Angeles can sneak into that group. And, and we'll get there in a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to get to this 49ers thing with you. Th thing yeah, the, the 49ers, yeah. So you're telling me, neutral site, you'd take Tennessee to beat San Francisco? I think so. I, so I can't I get think that. right now, until I see some stability with your quarterback, I want – I think I would be on the Tennessee Titans. And, fully and I'll healthy. be honest with you, I want to see San Francisco go Trey Lance for the rest of the year. Yeah. I want him to get the meaningful snaps this week in the bye. I understand. He, I, I get that he's hurt. I, I mean, I want him taking, whether it's mental reps, I don't mm -hmm. care. I want mm -hmm. him taking the reps as the one mm -hmm. because he gives you a higher ceiling. And, and you need to get him on the same page with Debo Samuel. And as soon as you do, that offense is going to be really yeah really hard to stop. I just look at San Francisco's offense, and while Tennessee's offense has not been clicking on all cylinders, and I get that they've been hurt, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, I still look at San Francisco's offense and go, I don't know, I don't really know what you're doing. I don't know what's going on right now. Like, Brandon Ayuk has completely disappeared. He's, he's no longer even a factor in that offense anymore, which doesn't make sense. At some point, that'll change, I believe, but I just haven't seen it yet. Who? Brandon Ayuk. He's just inconsistent. It was, I mean, it was one of the knocks on him coming in the draft. That's why I had him as a second-round pick when they drafted him. Mm -hmm. His highs are really high. His lows are really low. And then you got a running back room that can't stay healthy. you got Elijah Mitchell some weeks. you got Trey Sermon running out there. We haven't really mm -hmm. believed in him. I'd, it's just the offense is so disjointed at the moment. We have two quarterbacks. We have one quarterback. We, we don't really know. 
That's that's my misgiving with San Francisco. And so if yes, if it were a playoff situation right now and you had to put the Tennessee Titans against the San Francisco 49ers, all chips on the table, I'm taking the Titans. I want to see how close you come to this. Okay. How many players have a carry for the San Francisco 49ers? Nine. You're too low. Twelve? It's twelve. Jeez. They have twelve players that have run the ball for them. Seven of them, by the way, are running backs. Mm -hmm. That's dumbfounding to me. They have four different guys that have more than 15 carries. Yep. Only two of those are running backs. Mm -hmm. Jamichael Hastie's the fourth leading rusher on the team. He's touched the ball six times. Mm -hmm. They're just killed. (laughs) And I don't know what it is about this team that they cannot stay healthy. That's my biggest misgiving with him. A hundred percent healthy. I think San Francisco is a top eight team in the league. My fear is that they're never going to be a hundred percent healthy. Yep. And, and I'm talking ever. Mm-hmm. Cause now you, you get, do this once it's maybe fluke. Yeah. Cause now this you got third Kittle. Year run. You, I forgot. I, I forgot about Kittle. Kittle being on, on IR too. I mean, they're going to buy offense. this week. So it's only going to cost two games. Sure. But, uh, but that's kind of my point is they're, they're killed right now. They are. And so that's why I dinged them a little bit. It's not that I think they're a bad team. I just think at this point, Tennessee's a little bit better. And, and here's the other thing you got to realize with, with Kittle being gone for two games after the bye week. They mm-hmm. play Indianapolis and Chicago. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. That's two get healthy games before you go into a massive two game swing with Arizona and the Rams. Absolutely. And this is going to be different next week. My power rankings will be different next week because I don't think Tennessee's going to win this week. If Tennessee doesn't win this week, they're, they're, gonna, they're probably going to drop, depending on how they look coming out on the field. So, so to me, and that's, again, this is where this is maddeningly inconsistent because mm-hmm. there's projection in places and there's not projection in places. Mm-hmm. Me, mine's all, and I've said this, I rank the way Vegas does. Mm-hmm. I look at you head to head and go, if you played on a neutral field, who would I take? Mm-hmm. And, and San Francisco, there's just not that many teams that I would feel comfortable betting against them. Right. If so Tennessee can Francisco score this week, <laughs> if Tennessee scores this week, they may not fall. And and that's and I'll be honest with you, Tennessee's one. By the way, if you don't know, t- they're going to be uh, playing Buffalo this week. Tennessee's one of those. T- I mean, that tier, that bottom tier there of thirteen through hell, sixteen. Yeah. I just don't know exactly what you are, but I have a pretty decided idea. Okay. I got Tennessee at ten. I got San Francisco at eleven. It's not like a. It's not like there's a big difference to me uh, between those two teams right now. They both have their flaws. I just think Tennessee's a little bit better. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs. You and I are in lockstep. They're at nine, and I don't think you can put them any higher right now. No, because look at the teams in front of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, Baltimore's my eight, and and I'll be honest with you, it was. This is where, to me. This is where your line of Super Bowl contenders has to be. Yes. Do you put it below Kansas City? Yes. Or do you put it above Kansas City? Uh, it's below. If you Three put it five above, games, it's above. Projection mm-hmm. tells me it's below. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not throwing dirt on Andy Reid until I see him in the box, I look him in the eye, and I maybe flick him between the eyes a couple times. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Right. Uh, the defense is bad. The defense has been bad. Mm-hmm. This is not new. Oh, they can't run. They haven't been able to run. Mm-hmm. None of this is new. Nope. There's something different about this. And I'm going to level. I think the league's getting tape on Pat Mahomes, and they're going, hey, buddy, we're, we're figuring this shit out mm-hmm. of we can't watch your eyes mm-hmm. because you have really good eye discipline. And so nobody stops. That was one of the things that worked against Kansas City constantly, especially in zone. Mm -hmm. Or worked for Kansas City constantly, I should say. Especially in zone. His eye discipline was so good that he would throw you away. Now it appears at least through two of the five games I've seen, it almost looks like these guys are coached to, I don't care where he's looking. I don't care if he's looking dead behind him. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Play your man, play your zone. Don't worry about it. Yep. You don't stop until the whistle blows. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be screwing with him. Mm-hmm. He's not getting the easy throws anymore. Now, do I think that's going to change? I do. 
because I have Andy Reid sitting behind his Waffle House menu scripting up plays in the dirt, and I think at some point he's going to go, oh, oh, you figured out what you've already seen? Well, look at what you haven't seen yet. Exactly. So, to me, still a Super Bowl contender, but I can't have him any higher than nine. Agreed. Uh, I think this is where the line starts for Super I, Bowl I would contenders. Agree. I would agree. Everybody above this has a good shot to win. Well, I, don't know. I mean, good is a relative term with all of these teams, but a decent shot to make the Super Bowl and to possibly win it. The Baltimore Ravens, I mean, Lamar Jackson, what he's doing, you can't, you can't really knock them all that much. I mean, I get that they don't have much of a run game right now, uh, which is weird because there was the story the other day that other teams in the league are calling about their running backs. Yeah, they said Tyson Williams wrong. Uh, they're calling about running back. Yeah, they're calling about Tyson Williams. Yeah. That's the one. Because there's a lot of teams going, hey, we figure out how to use him. Mm -hmm. I, I know he doesn't fit your scheme and you're not loving him right now. We can. We can. Tyson Williams in Kansas City. How, th how good do you think that would be? In Kansas City? Yeah. Oh, that's not going to happen. But oh, I know it's not going to happen, but I'm just saying, if he was on that team, don't you think they would be, they would no longer be an also-ran when it comes I, to I'm running? not real sure you could put Barry Sanders behind the line for the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs and him not be denigrated a little bit mm -hmm. just because it's so bad at times. It's just like Marlon Mack. Everybody's losing their shit. Oh, Kansas City called out Marlon Mack. I don't really care. I don't like any running back back behind that. No. Now, Ty, Tyson Williams, who's the team I would be, who, that I would get, you know, giddy for that? Him is the spell back to Derrick Henry in Tennessee. That's where I would go full on six to midnight and I would have to change my undergarments. <laughs> right. And that's not going to happen either. Yeah. Okay. Baltimore Ravens, uh, you can't have them any lower than no, this. No, and they're not healthy. I mean, their high side's much mm -hmm. higher. Stephen Tao said that in the comments mm -hmm. because, of course, he did because he's a Ravens fan. Right. Uh, but I agree with him. That's not that's hashtag no homer. Yep. You know, he, there's no homer there. Mm -hmm. he, he, this team hurt is still eight. I feel like you're going to have to figure out this shit with Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. because right now I kind of feel like Baltimore is that kid that has a box of fireworks and they keep lighting them and throwing them at people. And nobody's gotten hurt yet, but if you keep doing this, somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. Lamar Jackson is not an elite thrower of the football. Mm -hmm. And he's not a guy you want throwing 45 times a game. And, you know, it's funny to me that Baltimore Ravens fans have bitched about Greg Roman for as long as I can remember. That his, his offense is antiquated and blah, 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 blah. Well, here's why it was antiquated. Do you realize how many games you've played into against teams that you shouldn't? Mm -hmm. That's why you're eight. You played dead in the Western with the Lions. You played dead in the Western with the Colts. Yeah, guess what? Both those, both those teams are in the bottom 12 in the league. And the second one was at home in prime time. Yep. That's unsettling to me. Now, do I want to see this team healthy? Yes, I do. Do I think the defense is better than it's played? Yes, I do. But I think they all go in concert with each other. Mm-hmm. That ball control offense, I want to see elements of that again. Because right now, outside of Lamar Jackson, you couldn't re run a greasy peg up a cat's ass. That's a problem. You're going to have to learn to do that. Yep. That's my only knock. And healthy, I think they'll be fine. All right, number seven on this week's Week 6 Power Rankings. The, the Green, Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers, okay. Uh, you and I have the same three teams ranked in this little area. Well, no, we don't, because you dropped Tampa Bay to five. Uh, this is where I have the Chargers. I want to put the Chargers higher, but at this point, I cannot put them above the Green Bay Packers. I cannot put them above the Dallas Cowboys. I, I can't either. I think the high side for Green Bay, the defense is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am worried about that. I will tell you they have called on corners. And they just signed uh, Quentin Dunbar. Oh, nice. Which is, uh, I know that sounds like, oh, who gives a shit? Because he's an improvement. Because mm -hmm. Kevin King sucks at life. Right. I still believe in Green Bay. Green Bay is, uh, it, it was hard not to have them in my top five this week. But I think there's, I think there is one team that has jumped up above them. And it's the Dallas Cowboys. I agree. The, Dallas the high Cowboys side of that Cowboys horrible. offense is just terrifying. Mm-hmm. And now the defense gets after you. Just, and I want you to remember this before anybody says, oh, Green Bay should be ahead of Dallas. No, they shouldn't. You do realize they're doing this without DeMarcus Lawrence, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> they looked at Jalen Smith and went, bye. You're good. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. 
Because we got Jabril Cox, and he's cheaper and just as good. Mm -hmm. And I think he adds an element to that team that Jalen Smith couldn't. I'd agree with that. Because Jabril Cox is probably the best coverage linebacker I've ever graded in the 10 years I've been doing this. Mm -hmm. It's a dynamic team. It's a dynamic team. Mm -hmm. And Anthony Brown on the other side. Everybody talks about Trayvon Diggs. Anthony Brown's played pretty fucking well, too. Yes, he has. That poor kid, uh, I, I, I just have to say his name with, with, with the, you know, our little platform here mm -hmm. because nobody else has. No, nobody talks about Because Trayvon Diggs him. gets all the right. headlines. Right. Well, of course he does because he's got five damn or six interceptions. I'm not saying there. I don't get it. Right. I'm just saying there should be a, you know, Trayvon's the headline. There should be a byline that says, <laughs> hey, Anthony Brown's been pretty fucking good, dude. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, we appreciate you adding that, uh, that byline. To me right now, I mean, Dallas... While they still give up a whole bunch of yards and they still give a give up a bunch of points, the the difference in that, I mean, I don't know. I, I look at this much like the Tampa Bay defense last year. I look at this team and go, you have some serious, impactful players on defense that can, yeah, maybe you give up a bunch, but your offense is good enough to cover those ills. And guess what? You're also going to create turnovers that's going to give you the ball in advantageous positions, maybe end some scoring drives for your opponents. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, I, I believe Dallas has a championship caliber defense. I agree. I think they have a championship caliber team. Agreed. They're just they're really, really good. I mean, they are the number one offense in, in, in football right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think you can argue much about that. Mm -hmm. So Dallas has snuck into my top five. D Dallas almost snuck into my top five. They knocked the Green Bay Packers out of the top five for me. Um, number five, you've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at five. Your secondary. I know, we're god-awful. Blows. I know, it's awful. It would be one thing if you were getting legitimate pass rush. Yeah. But your, your, your boy... Uh, uh, Joe, try on shenanigans. Are you, are shenanigans. You, are you starting to see what, what it was about him that I didn't love? No. It's the play-in, play-out thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you see these burst plays. Yep. And then you forget he's on the field for a quarter. Mm -hmm. That's my problem. What, now, what's the solution to that? Because people are going to go, oh, you're stupid. He grades. Blah, blah, blah. Take, away the, take, take away the burst plays. Mm -hmm. Then look at how he grades. Yeah. He's not a down-in, down-out player. That was my drawback on him. I never saw him as a down-in, down-out pass rusher. He's not supposed to be. I saw him, and I'll tell you how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. At least, let me rephrase it. I can't tell you how this will go because I'm not Bruce Arians, and he wears goofy hats, so his judgment's a little skewed. How long is Levante David out for? Three weeks. That's where I'm playing Dro Joe Tryon shenanigans. Really? That's how he came in the league. You go play him on the inside. With Devin White. Okay. I'm going to replace Le Levante. That was the beauty of him in the first place. He can play every position. Okay. And, and Pierre Paul comes back. Shaq mm -hmm. Barrett's there. Mm -hmm. I think that can cure the ills of the secondary. Mm -hmm. This is, in my opinion, probably the lowest I'm going to have Tampa Bay. Solely because so many other teams impressed me so much. You played the Dolphins. Brady did great things. Whoopty damn dude. Yeah. I'm still looking at your secondary going, you gave up damn near 30, 300 yards to Jacoby Brissett. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And I feel like right now Justin Herbert would cut you into a bajillion pieces and put you on a fucking hibachi stove. <laughs> right. And dare Tom Brady to keep up with him. Yeah, and, and, that's, and, and that's where it is. And I, to me, you have to do something to throw a wrench into that spoke. Because mm -hmm. if you keep asking Tom Brady to throw the ball 40, 45, 50 times a game, it's eventually going to come back to bite you yep. in the ass. Might not be this year. Might be six years from now. Who the fuck knows? Mm -hmm. Father Time's undefeated, and you can't keep doing that. I agree. But just remember that I said that. Watch Joe try on Sheboygan. Uh, <laughs> Shoyinka. I'm never going to say it right. Uh, it's silly because I can't remember it until uh -huh. you say it, and then nah, I'm having more fun this way. Him playing inside linebacker, is I, I could see that being an iteration of this team moving forward. Okay, I'm not saying he's taking over for Le Levante. David. No, he won't. I'm saying they will try to find a way to get right. him in the lineup, keep things fresh, keep the pass rush happening. That's a different angle that you can rush the passer from. Mm -hmm. When they drafted him, that's what I was thinking. When they drafted him, they thought, 
okay, we've got JPP and we've got Shaq Barrett. JPP is getting older. He needs to not be on the field all the time. No, and, and I agree with that. So Joe Tryon was the spot guy. He, he was supposed to do that. Now JPP gets hurt. Now you have to play him every down. And I understand what you're saying. But the splash plays with him are so great. And that's the thing, is that I want to see him roaming around the defense doing it. That was the highlight of him. Yep. And that was when I, when I dinged Tampa Bay for drafting him. It was because of all the teams that didn't need all of the things he did, they didn't. Mm -hmm. So do I understand him having a role doing that? I just don't think that's necessarily using his talents to the best of his abilities. Yep. But I'm seeing a path now of, okay, Levante David's already gotten dinged up. JPP's already gotten dinged up. Maybe we can move you around this formation mm -hmm. and do exactly what it was that I was talking about in the pre-draft. Just, I can't tell you it's going to happen. I'm just telling you if I was Todd Bowles, I'd be going, mm hmm. hmm. I believe that could help my spotty secondary, right. I do declare. Right. Uh, I still have Tampa Bay at number three this week. I didn't change anything about my top three from last week. I only did because I was more impressed by two teams that I saw mm -hmm. than I was Tampa Bay. And the Chargers were one of them. Mm -hmm. And they're your number four team this week, and I get it. Oh, I, I'm oh. not at the point where I can put them there yet. Wrong one. That's fine. Uh, everybody knows who they are. Everybody knows who the top three teams are anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> the Los Angeles Chargers are a great team. I, I've waxed poetic about them for, you know, well, hell, in the offseason. And you're continuing to prove it week in and week out. I mean, the, you know, and the, the amazing fortitude that I thought that Brandon Staley and, and uh, Joe Lombardi showed this past week of going for it on tough fourth down calls. I love it. I love I'll just let my guys go out and get it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love Brandon Staley. I love Justin Herbert. Derwin James is a huge impact on this defense. Mm -hmm. God, I hope you stay healthy. I, I mean, I can sit here and wax poetic for 10 minutes about the Chargers. This is exactly to me where they belong. Yep. Because right now, their floor is less frightening to me than Tampa Bay's. Yes. I'll agree. That's the only discrepancy. I'm, I'm not their high side. The, the, the high side of the top eight teams in this, mm -hmm. nine teams in this, mm -hmm. is the same. You can win a Super Bowl. The floor for Tampa Bay is that good teams figure out how to pick you apart, and you throw Brady's arm off. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can throw Justin Herbert's arm off. And you've got Eckler, and you've got you know a litany of weapons. I just I really like the LA Chargers. Mm -hmm. And my, my my cautious optimism on them, I didn't want to believe it until I saw it. Well, now I've seen it. Yep. And at number yeah, yeah, at number three this week in the week six power rankings. Dum dum dum. It's the Arizona Cardinals. No, the Los Angeles Rams. You got the Cardinals going up to number two. I do. Nice. You win two. You, you win two games in your division like that. I mm -hmm. can't help but do something with you. Okay. Uh, and I just can't. The Cardinals moved up to my four this week. I look at the, I, and I want to do all three of these teams together because they all three, they have one thing, and the Chargers are a damn close four here. They're so complete in that there's not a weakness. Mm -hmm. I mean, name me the weakness on any of those four teams. Oh, the Chargers don't love to run it between the tackles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they run it to the outside mm -hmm. and pre-snap motion and all the things. Mm -hmm. Well, the third corner for the Rams is not great. Yeah, about that. <laughs> uh, but the line, yeah, so Matthew Stafford throws it real fast. Mm -hmm. He's got the best slot receiver in the league. Mm -hmm. Robert Woods has been an afterthought for three weeks. Right. Four weeks. Right. Week five, he goes, hey, y'all, watch this. Hey, watch me hold Seattle's mouth open and drop it in there like I'm feeding a dog a pill. <laughs> because that's just a, but you don't have to do that. They got right. Van Jefferson, Sean Jackson, Daryl Henderson, Sony Michelle, who you traded a fourth-round pick for, and you just look at him and go, you just sit over there and look cute, and if we need you, we'll call you. Yeah. This team is ridiculously good. I'd agree. And they have my favorite coach in the NFL. Sean McVay to me. And that's something I, I, I want to do this mm -hmm. at, like, the midseason point. I want to rank every coach in the NFL. Rank coaches? Mm -hmm. Okay. We know who's 32. Uh, the Rams are three. I, I mean, if it's anybody other than Urban Meyer, you're doing it wrong. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say one of the ones I talk shit about all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot the one I talk about. I talk shit about 
literally all the literally time. Literally all like the time. Like, I've never Thank said you. anything nice about them. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we know who 32 is. There could be some disagreements elsewhere, but 32, I think we all know who it is. Los Angeles Rams at number three. Yes, they are a very complete team. They're awesome. Got it. They're my number two still. Arizona Cardinals are your two. They moved up to four this week for me, breaking into the top five. You just can't argue. You can't argue with a 5-0 and record. I get that the offense didn't look great this past week, but, uh, you know, I chalked that up to much of that San Francisco 49ers uh, defense. My biggest fear with Arizona is that now we've we've unveiled how to stop them. You keep Kyler Murray in the pocket. Yep. Yeah, you, you, you worry about nothing else. But you do just you have the horses Let to him do that. beat you passing the ball. Right, but how many teams have the horses to be able to it's do that? It's very few. That's why, yes, mm-hmm. they have a, a flaw that the other three don't have. But there's so few teams that could actually. You're Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. That's one of the teams that could mm-hmm. because you have so much athleticism at linebacker. Uh, that's actually, oddly enough, what got me thinking about Joe uh, Tryon uh, uh, Shamwell Sham. playing at inside linebacker. And yes, I'm doing these off the top of my head, oh. and I'm running out of letters, words that start with S. Yeah. That's what got me thinking about it was, oh, that would be mean as hell against, uh, against Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. But even then, that could have been an aberration. Yeah. It could literally have been an aberration, and the next time somebody tries to do it, they might throw for four bills on him. Yep. And it wouldn't shock me. Mm-hmm. He's, he is spreading the ball around in a way I have never seen a quarterback do. This, uh, what was the stat? Uh, they have seven receivers that have caught a pass. Six of them have 15 catches and over 150 yards. Yep. That's sweet Lord. That's, uh, who the hell do you stop? Like when you line up, how do you go d- double DeAndre at what and leave Christian Kirk one on one or Rondell Moore? That's that's not going to go well. And the reclamation the project that is Max Williams. Hmm? But that's the choice you're going to make every yeah. time. And that's <laughs> why no, that for me is why they're two. Right, you have no option but to do that. They have so many weapons. They have an unbelievable quarterback. Most games you can't contain Kyler Murray. They're going to win a shitload of games. And they're five and zero. Oh. How do you mm-hmm. not have them in the top five if they're if they, if they're five and zero? Oh? Uh, in the words of my friend, the long snapper for the Cincinnati Bengals, two chicks at the same time. <laughs> I've been trying to find a reason to get that in yeah. all day. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, finally found it. Good for you. I'm and just then force uh, it in there. And then the number you know, one and team. You know who else would force it in there? What's it? Yeah. Boop, boop. Oh, other way. Boop, boop. <laughs> that guy. Shit, no man. You get your ass kicked saying something like that. You get your ass kicked saying something like that. And the number one team in week six power rankings is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, if it's not the Buffalo Bills, you did it wrong. I I, I saw a lot of that in the comments. If Buffalo's not one, you did it wrong. Let me put it this way. Buffalo was my one last week, Mm -hmm. and they just, she lacked the reigning AFC champions on their home field. Yep. It was never not going to be the Buffalo Bills. It's the most complete team in football to me. It's the best team in football. And I'm going to level, there's not a whole lot that could change my mind at this mm-hmm. point. I mean, just be really honest with yourself. All right, Buffalo plays at the Titans this week on Monday Night Football. Win. And, and I Big agree time. with you. I, and I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But let's say they go in here and lose. You know where Buffalo would be for me next week? Don't say one. One. No. They'd be one. No, they wouldn't. They'd be one. Because this is a letdown spot. That's a letdown spot on the road on Monday Night Football. That, 100%. And you had to deal with the White Storm last week. Arizona goes to Cleveland and wins. They're not your one next week. Because I don't care. Six and zero. Because I don't care that you beat Cleveland. Okay. I I really don't care. Here's the thing. This is the part of how I rank that you don't seem to understand. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that could happen between the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Bills that changes my mind. That if these two, if Buffalo played any other team in the NFL, I'm not betting against Buffalo. I don't give a fuck. Here's the one thing that could happen. Josh Allen could die. That's what would <laughs> that that would change it. Uh, Stephon Diggs could be abducted by the Buffalo Mafia and taken to Canada and not allowed to return. Mm-hmm. That might change my mind. Sean McDermott could decide he wants to go commentate games to be the weirdest combination of hockey announcers ever with Sean McDermott, Sean McDermott, and Sean McDonough. And I'm not sure anything I just said outside of Josh Allen would actually change my mind. Yeah. This is not going to happen. Okay. I mean, for me, yes, there is a layer of on the field. There's also a layer mm-hmm. of projection of I, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I've seen the high side of Buffalo, and it's just damn better than every team in the league. I've also seen a letdown from every team in the league 
not named Buffalo. Yeah. If it does not happen this week, because here, here's the thing. Buffalo plays at the Tennessee Titans this week. And if they then? don't win that game, then you go bye week, Minnesota. Or no, excuse me. I'm on the, I think I'm on the wrong line here. Yeah. You go Miami after the bye week at Jacksonville, at the Jets, Indianapolis, at Saints, then the Patriots, and then you play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, you, both both Tampa Bay and Buffalo, I'm expecting them to have one loss when they meet up in December. Me too. They're going to continue to stay at this level. But yes, if they lost to the Tennessee Titans, I would... I would, I will definitely have them lower on my power rankings next week, especially if Arizona beats beats Cleveland and does it convincingly. I know maybe that's this, uh, maybe that's what you hate so much about my power rankings is that I I do care. I do care what your latest game is. It's not that it means everything, but it means that you're just not as good as I thought you were the, last the, week. Well, the difference between you and I is that your last game means more than every other game. It doesn't for me. Mm-hmm. And that's a Vegas mindset. That's why I'm the gambler right. and you're the, the the analytical guy. Right, exactly. I, I'm not. You know, I look at this like Vegas. Pittsburgh Steelers, you know the reason I'm so slow to throw dirt on them? Because I wouldn't bet against them. Mm-hmm. And that's how I do this. You know, I can't, I, and and I, I hate to break the sensibilities of about 11 fan bases here that think I hate your franchise. I don't give a fuck about your team. I do not give a flying rat's ass. Mm-hmm. There is one team in this league that I like. Uh, and I'm officially at the point of I like my Jets. I don't love them. Mm-hmm. You know what I love? I love my wife. I love my children. I love uh, my money. Yep. That's it. Yep. That's it. I, I, I don't hate teams. I don't love teams. Mm-hmm. I love money. And that's what I care about. <laughs> okay. When it comes to the NFL, that's this is a money-making adventure for me. Yeah. So for me, everything I look at is if you played each other, who would I bet on? Yep. And that is, if we had a formula here of how we figure this out, on-field performance is probably 25% of mine. 75% of mine is, who would I bet on? Yep. And and for me, on-field performance, what you did last week just doesn't mean shit to me. That's the reason I have the Eagles so low. Yeah. Because I don't care that you beat the Panthers. Yeah. I watched you poop in your pants on national television. So, and that's fine. In Philadelphia, you have three first-round picks. I'm personally rooting for you to lose every game <laughs> because I would love to see you have three top ten picks because right. I've never seen that before. Right. The number one team in the Week 6 power rankings, the Buffalo Bills, expect them to stay there for a long, long time because yeah, they don't have another game that they could lose, in my mind, until they go to Tampa Bay in December. Yeah, let me put it this way. The Buffalo Bills have forwarded their mail to the number one spot in my power rankings. Yep. And they didn't take a change of address form. Uh, I don't like the chances of any other team <laughs> being in that spot for quite some time. Oh, Slasher, I feel bad for you, buddy. Yeah, he said in the comments he's going to be watching the game on Thursday night in the fetal position, and I don't blame you one little bit. That's how I watch every Jet game now. Yeah. Yeah, you said you were more comfortable on the floor because it helps your back, so I tried it. Mm, mm-hmm. hurts my back, but it makes, me, it makes the sobbing one controlled motion. There you go. There you go. Anyway, we will, of course, have all of your uh, all of your preview content for the Thursday night game coming up uh, here in the Sportsocracy team-by-team content as well. Continue. Check out all the recaps. Every team's recaps went up last night. Uh, and, and all of you, the ones that love us so much, do me a favor. Go to the Atlanta Falcons and the New York Jets. Click on it. Turn the sound off on your computer. Go to the bar. Play with yourself. I don't care. Just click that and let the rest of them roll through. Yeah. Because your views mean more than we could ever tell you. And uh, thanks to Jason Trump, I figured out how to tie all the videos together. So if you play one, they'll play them all. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do shit. I'm Tex Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. We got to get out of this hot box. Thankfully, yeah, the air conditioner's I, I, I'm gone today. I'm starting to see dead relatives. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> uh, it's been fun, as all of the episodes are fun, uh, with y'all in the comments involved. We appreciate it. We love it. We love for you to share all this stuff out. Get uh, get more of your friends to come and join us here at the Sportsocracy every weekday morning at 10 a.m. Speaking of that, uh, we have a contest that will be starting probably the first week in November. If you don't follow our Facebook page, you don't subscribe to the channel, you should do that now. 
because if you have done that by November the 1st, you're going to have a chance to win something really cool for you and one of your friends. And Tank has no idea what I'm talking about because I forgot to tell him this this morning through my one bloodshot halfway open, locked myself out of the fucking building eye. I'm as excited as you are. I can't wait to find out what it is. Uh, hit that like button, share, follow, all that kind of stuff. Social media is at the Sportsocracy. Check out the Sportsocracy.com as well as the new producer's Facebook page. We got all, th all kind of things going as we are getting more and more settled here into our new digs in the Wicked Weed studio. Don't forget to check out our friends at WickedWeedBrewing.com. Wicked Weed Brewing, drink different. We will see you next time. <laughs> Thank you.